All right, so this is naming angles notes. <clears throat> Teach you how to name angles. This is the beginning of unit two. Uh, out to the left here is an example of an angle. Based on this example, we're going to talk about stuff over here. So an angle is formed by two rays with a common endpoint. I should know what rays are by now, but if you look over here, this angle is formed by two rays that share a common endpoint. The common endpoint is called the vertex. Vertex. This is the common endpoint that the two rays share that form the angle. In this case, my vertex will be B. This ray right here and this ray right here both share point B. In an angle, the rays are called the sides. So when I ask you about the size of the angle, I'm talking about the two rays that make the angle. You can name an angle using three letters. This other sentence right here is the most important part. The middle letter must always represent the vertex. So when you name an angle, the vertex must always be in the middle. You name an angle with three letters. When you name it, the vertex has to be in the middle. Use a single letter if there is only one angle located at the vertex. I'll show you what they're talking about right there on the back. What? You can, you can name it with one letter sometimes, and it has to be that vertex letter, but that's if you're only looking at one angle by itself. Sometimes you have multiple angles connected to each other. You can't name that with one ang one letter. Uh, when referring to the measure of an angle, use a lowercase m. That lowercase m means the measure of. And in the example right here, this reads, the measure of angle, this is the angle symbol, looks like a less than sign. It's just flat at the bottom. The measure of angle ABC is equal to 60 degrees. <clears throat> that is how that will read to you. The measure of angle ABC is equal to 60 degrees. And it's showing you that out here to the left. <clears throat> All right. So that's how to name an angle. Types of angles. Y'all should know these already. We defined these in unit one. DJ, what's this first one? An acute angle. Good. And you know an acute angle is less than what? 90 degrees. Trenton, what's the second one? You know an obtuse is greater than what? Greater than what? No, man. I ain't say no ma'am, I said no ma'am. I ain't say ma'am, I said ma'am. I said ma'am, but it's okay. Y'all missing on my video for arguing back and forth with me. Oh, are you recording? Yes. <laughs> Next one is a right. Equals 90. Last one is a straight equals one eighty. Alright. So now here I'm supposed to start out by doing the first one with you, but honestly I could just start calling people now. No, I'm gonna do the first one with you. Example one, over here to the side you got a diagram showing you the angle. The angle is labeled A, B, C, and D. We want to answer based off the stuff uh, over there to the left. So the first part says name the vertex of the angle. Go ahead, Eric. The vertex is K. Part B says name the sides of the angle. Clifton? Say it again. No. What they up top? What it said the sides are. The sides are rays, so you got to give me two rays. 
Say it a lot of Raphael. Thank you. Ray K L and Ray K J. Ray K L and Ray K J and that's the only way I can name those two too. And y'all should know why. We talked about this when I showed y'all how to name rays. <clears throat> that's the only way I can name those two. Those are the two rays that make up the sides of the angle. Part C give three ways to name the angle. Rachel, give me one way. How can I name this angle? Who? I can't hear you. Angle JKL. Clifton. Angle LKJ. I'm at third way. The third way, if you're reading up top, use a single letter if there's only one angle located at the vertex. <clears throat> so in this case, this is only one angle here. I can call this angle K. I'm going to add something in for y'all too. <clears throat> it's not here, but I want to show you now. Sometimes they don't put letters on them, or sometimes they do. Sometimes they put both letters and a number, or sometimes they'll just do numbers. It depends all on how they feel on labeling angles. Sometimes they just put a number inside the angle. This little number is not a degree. It's not saying one degree. They'll put a degree symbol by it if it's actually a degree. If they just put numbers there, they're labeling the angles with numbers. And in that case, if they had a number there, say they had a one right there, I can call this angle one if I wanted to, if that was there. <coughs> if they labeled it that way. That's a fourth way. You can't use the numbers if they put a number on the angle. But I want you to understand a number like that is different than having the degrees on the angle. This is telling me this angle is up here 60 degrees. I can't call this angle 60 degrees. That's wrong. It's just telling me that the measure of the angle is 60 degrees. That's different than having a number there labeling an angle. <coughs> Alright, last thing is to classify Kamara, what kind of angle is this? Thank you. Alright, so I'm going to ask y'all straight up now. Example 2, similar to example 1, just using this as an uh, example down here. Make sure you're paying attention. Deja, name the vertex of the angle. Huh? Thank you. Meta. Name the size of the angle. What now? Say the full thing. Ray S T. Which way? Sound like you said two different things. Tell me which way. SR. You can't say RS. I'm just saying, I just wanted you to say it. I mean, so kids can understand. You cannot say Ray RS and Ray TS. That would be wrong. I don't know what you're talking about if you say that. Those are not rays. The rays from SR and ST. Stay at the table. Archer, I feel like you with me today. Uh, give three ways to name the angle. Just give me one of them. Name the angle one way for me. Angle RST. Angle TSR. And angle S. Good. I see you on today. Stay on. If I put a number on here, number two, we could also call this angle two. Might as well finish strong at this table. D, classify the angle Jenna.
Alright, on the back. Mm, fine. I need to slow down. Y'all gonna have too much free time. <laughs> Alright, on the back. Congruent angles. I just want to talk about these first before we define it. Over to the left is an example of two congruent angles. You should know what the word congruent means. It means the same in size and shape. These two angles have the same measure. They are congruent. Angle A and B would be congruent. Up here in this part, you're just writing that statement out. It says if, and we're going to write the measure of angle. We're not writing the word measure. We're going to write the symbol stuff. The measure of angle A is congruent to the measure of angle B. then the angles are congruent. This is written as angle A is congruent to angle B. Next part, angle bisector. We've talked about this word before. Stay with me, metal. <coughs> Angle bisector. Bisector. Anybody know what that word means? Bisect? If I bisect something, what do I do to it? You're cutting it in half. Yes. So anytime you hear the word bisector in a problem or anything, they let you know that something's being split in half. This angle over here, ABC, is being cut in half by a bisector. You should see the bisector right there, BD. That bisector for this one is a ray. So in this case, our definition is going to say a ray <coughs> that divides an angle into two congruent angles. In the diagram to the right, ray BD. is a bisector or angle bisector. Therefore, small angles, angle ABD is congruent to angle DBC. I'm going to show you that over there as it's written. <coughs> so, just to explain the situation to you, you got a big angle here, ABC. That's the full angle. Got a bisector coming in, BD, this ray. Splits the angle into two smaller angles here. That means these two smaller angles are congruent. They even show you that with this marking here, showing you that this angle and this angle are congruent to each other. That means ABD is congruent to DBC. That's the case. I should be able to give you certain information about maybe one one of the angles. You should be able to tell me what all the angles equal, either the big angle and the small ones. For example, I should be able to say something like this. Uh, let me go colors. Maybe I tell you angle ABD equals 35 degrees. So A, B, D equals 35 degrees. And then I ask you, what's the measure of angle A, B, C? What you coming up with? 700. That's 35 degrees, bro. <laughs> Yeah, most of y'all saying that ABC would have to be 70 degrees, the whole thing. <coughs> That's a pretty simple concept. If I tell you ABD, which is this angle right here, is 35, that means the other angle on the other side has to be 35, which means the whole thing has to be 70 degrees. All right, just want to kind of put numbers on there to kind of show you. Next one, perpendicular lines. Perpendicular lines are two lines that intersect. 
at a right angle. The symbol for perpendicular is, and it looks like an upside down capital T. That's a symbol for perpendicular. Parallel was those two vertical lines you saw in the diction uh, when we were doing the dictionary terms just now. This is perpendicular. So in the diagram to the left, I mean to the right, you would write this as line L is perpendicular to line M. Looking at the diagram over here, other certain stuff I want you to understand about perpendicular lines. Most time you'll be able to identify them as perpendicular because they have that right angle box in there showing you that you got a right angle created by those two lines. If that's the case, then they are perpendicular. Only other thing you need to understand that's not shown, <coughs> all these angles will be right angles. If even one is a right angle, all the other ones have to be right angles here, here, and here. But we're just not going to draw all those boxes in for you. You need to understand, if you see that box there, all those angles around there are right angles, unless you got extra lines coming in somewhere. <clears throat> so that's perpendicular lines. The next part is perpendicular bisector. There's a difference between the two. Perpendicular lines, they go infinitely in each direction. You can't measure those. Perpendicular bisector, that's when you have a line or segment or array, something cutting through a line segment. Here I got a line segment with endpoints on it, a line segment that I can measure. And then directly down the middle of that line segment is a line coming through cutting it in half at its middle, at its midpoint. I'm seeing that because they indicated with side markings here that these two segments are congruent. So this is the definition of a perpendicular bisector. This is what it will look like. Perpendicular because you still got the right angles here. Bisector because it's cutting a segment in half. <clears throat> so a line, a segment, or a ray. Perpendicular. You don't know how to spell it. It's right out there to the side. All right. <clears throat> to a segment at its midpoint. And then it says in the diagram to the right, <coughs> LM, or well line LM, excuse me. So use the line symbol. Line LM is perpendicular, is the perpendicular bisector to segment PQ. So that's the situation showing out there to the right. Got a line coming through and cutting that line segment PQ in half. All right, let's run through these examples and we're done. I'm making my way around though. <coughs> uh, example three, got a diagram I have to the right. Match your questions based off of it. Adeline. Write another name for angle CBF. A little louder. Yeah, angle FBC. <coughs> oh, Jayla. Name the size of angle EBD. No. What you got? Yeah, I'm waiting on you. Yeah. 
You say Ray BD? Yeah. What's the other one? Oh. You're struggling right now. Yeah, B E. So the two rays are Ray B D and Ray B E. Y'all should be able to see that on the figure for yourself. Okay, Anna, classify. Angle A B C. Thank you. Oh, what you said? Hmm. Well, hold on, man. <coughs> oh, this one's good. I can bounce around with this one a little bit. Uh, Zamari, give me an example of an obtuse angle. Give me an example of an obtuse angle. There's multiple on here. I'm only asking you for one. Yeah, EBC is a good one. Angle EBC, that's one she said. I want some more. Give me another one. Go ahead, Rachel. Shh, don't yell them out. Huh. E angle EBD. Give me one more. ABF. Okay, I'll take that. Angle ABF. Oh, that's a good one for somebody. Uh, who I want for this? Might as well. Come on. Yep. Name two congruent angles. Let's see if you can do this. Let me see where you're going with this. Before I write it, ABD and what? Say it again. Alright. So angle ABD and DBC. Those are not even the ones I was looking for. Somebody else got the ones I was looking for. Yeah, Clifton. Yeah. ABE. No, I don't. They ask you for one example. A, B, E, and what's the other one? F, B, C. Yeah, that's the ones I was looking for. <coughs> All right. Rachel, you can have this one. Name the perpendicular bisector. I know. That's why I wanted you to have this one. It may help you if you turn your paper sideways. You got it for me, Kayla? Yes. What is it? No. ABC is just that straight angle. I'm asking for the perpendicular bisector, the thing that cuts through a line. So. Ray BD. All right. <laughs> Ray B D is the perpendicular bisector that you should see in there. <coughs> uh, next one. This is, all these are for example four. I say that because kids in the other class we got down here they still give me A B C stuff. Ain't no A B C on here. Just F Y. Oh, we ain't mess with you. The car go ahead. Name the vertex of angle one. See, that's too easy for you. Robert, name the size of angle four. Nope. Shh, let the man think for a second. This is true.
Say it correctly. Because you need to speak my language. Ray what? TZ and say it correctly. Thank you. <coughs> Deja, write another name for Angle 3. You get off your phone. What now? Angle Z to you. Yeah, either way. Or U C Z. Uh next one, Jim. Classify angle Y T W. Yeah, it's alright. Next one, name two perpendicular lines, Trenton. It says name two perpendicular lines. You have to name them as lines. Line Y Z, good. Good. A lot of people don't see that. They probably still confused. Line Y Z, line X W. My Y's are funny, sorry. They're weird looking. Last one. Who can I get for this? I ain't asked Madison nothing yet. But I think I want Hamina for this. Hamina, Hamina. I hope I pronounced it right. <coughs> Name the angle bisector. Madison, name the angle bisector. I know you don't. It's the same people. I want to, I want come over. Say it correctly. It's not a line. Ray to you. All right, that is your note.